This slideshow covers the activity for the soils and soilless substrate lab. During a normal quarter, you would make your own media using some of the components and additives from the previous slideshow and grow marigolds under different pH and salt level conditions. You would also grow these plants in some specialty substrates whose purpose is to serve particular plant needs. Since we can't grow plants ourselves, we will study data from a previous quarter. We will start by learning how to make media. It's trickier than it sounds, so I've tried to present this with as much detail as possible. Then we'll discuss the modifications made to the media in order to create environments with different chemical properties, such as altering the pH and soluble salt levels. We've also used some specialized substrates. This lab, as I mentioned, uses marigolds grown in containers, but throughout this lab, I want you to consider the impact pH and salt conditions might have on actual crops or plants growing in soil. We will be going over the recipe for a modified peat light media. To make two cubic feet, we'll need one cubic foot of sphagnum peat moss and one cubic foot of perlite. We'll also need a few ounces of our supplements. Triple superphosphate provides phosphorus that is highly soluble and therefore rapidly available to the plant and is one of the macronutrients required for plant success. Potassium nitrate is a soluble source of the other two essential macronutrients for plants, potassium and nitrogen. Dolomite is a pH adjuster that raises the pH by adding calcium and magnesium carbonate. Finally, Micromax Plus is a supplement that adds micronutrients to a media. This slide shows all of the ingredients and how to measure them. Just like in cooking, you'll have measuring devices, such as the container pictured in photo number two, which measures one cubic foot of substrate. You'd use this to measure the sphagnum peat moss and the perlite. For the smaller amounts needed for the additives, you'd want to use a scale. Here are some images showing how to use the scale to measure the Micromax Plus. We only need 0.1 ounces. This is a small amount, so be sure to check your units. If you accidentally measured out 0.1 grams, you'd have only about 0.003 ounces. See the handout titled Using the Scale found on Canvas. This handout covers how to operate a scale using a weigh boat, tearing the scale, and then weighing your material. All of the additives, because they're such small amounts, are combined into a paper bag. This is the easiest way to mix them into the larger portions of the media. Start by mixing the dominant ingredients, the peat and the perlite. Dump them into a pile on the ground and flip the ingredients back and forth between two piles for adequate mixing. Once it looks homogenous, combine it back to one pile and spread it out and then add your supplements evenly from the paper bag. Then mix by flipping your pile again. Mixing is a huge part of scientific research. It seems like a simple concept, but you need to homogenize any solutions or substrates and you use mixing to get representative samples. Using marigold transplant plugs, we want to study the effect different pH, salt, and propagation mixes have on these marigolds grown in containers over the course of five weeks. Another important part of conducting a scientific experiment is replicating your treatments. It would be unwise to conduct an experiment on one subject, see some results, and claim to have made an important discovery. Replicating your treatments allows you to verify your results. In this case, we have 12 treatments with three replications for a total of 36 marigold plants. Because we're conducting an experiment, we need to ask specific research questions, such as those listed here on this slide. You also need to be sure you're conducting your experiment in a way you can answer these questions. For instance, if you want to know the impact of high and low pH conditions on your plants, you would need to create treatments representing these conditions. You'd want to take initial and final pH measurements to see if it changed over time. To observe the effect these pH levels have on the plant, we've chosen to measure stem height. It's an easy measurement to take and is indicative of plant growth and success. A hypothesis is a possible answer to your research questions. Remember, you don't prove a hypothesis, you support it. You may hypothesize that plants grown in substrates with suboptimal levels of soluble salts might not grow very tall because of the lack of nutrient availability. And perhaps plants in substrates with extreme pH levels 
be it low or high, may be stunted due to damage to the roots. Here are our treatments. Our control is a treatment we will compare with other treatments. It consists of marigolds grown in the same modified peatlight substrate we made earlier, with no additional supplements. Our pH treatments include more alkaline environments by using nine additional grams of dolomite to our modified peatlight substrate, and then one with 90 additional grams of dolomite to raise the pH substantially. We also have treatments with acidic pH levels by adding five grams of ferrous sulfate to lower the pH, and then 40 grams to really try and create an acidic environment. Our salt level treatments include suboptimal, adequate, and excessive salt conditions by adding 5, 20, and 40 grams of ammonium sulfate, respectively. Again, these supplements were added to our modified peat light substrate we're using as our growing media. The last four treatments represent different specialized substrates to replace the modified peat light. These include a propagation mix, a palm cactus and citrus mix, an acid planting mix, and a pinstrup mix. Recall the measurements we need from slide eight. The meters pictured here are examples of instruments used to take pH and EC readings. Some meters come with different probes for different measurements. In the case of the black meter in picture two, the same probe is used to take the pH and EC measurements, but you need to change the setting on your meter depending on which measurement you're taking. Some meters can be stuck directly into the soil, such as in picture four. These are often used in hydroponics because they can be stuck directly into your soil or substrate and give you an immediate EC and pH reading. To conduct the stem height measurements, we used a ruler and measured from the level of the soil to the uppermost growing point on the marigold, which is known as the primary meristem. The leaves are not part of the primary meristem, so be careful not to just go from the lowest to the tallest point on your plant.